3 o'clock, great to have you with us. Minus Kenny Cott, who we are almost assured hold us out, called in sick on a 72-degree sunny day in February with the Red Wings at home. Uh, people, all I could say is if you see a Ruslov gudis looking MF at the bar or at the game tonight, Kenny, that better not be you. All right. Odyssey.com Rewind, you missed anything. We addressed not only Kenny, but Monty Williams. I want to do something for Lion fans. I think this is the perfect day as we truly begin the combine. Uh, and I, I started thinking, because I heard Doug and Scott doing the mock draft, you know, 17.6 or whatever. And I wanted to add some value. And that is this. Fans, this is not an insult. And I'm being very sincere. Fans don't know players. You shouldn't know players. You're busting your ass raising kids, paying a mortgage. Like, you shouldn't know who the star corner at Toledo is. Like, you you just shouldn't. It's not healthy for you. <laughs> now, so what are you trying to say about us? <laughs> well, this is what we do for a living. Okay. I mean, All it's right, just thank a, you for at least qualifying it's that. It's a different burden of proof. And, like, I, I'll take it a step further. Doing cash the ticket <laughs> makes it even more where you watch even more, right? So, right, because when you're like, oh, this guy, and I'm like, oh, yeah, because I saw that right. game, and then I feel like I'm a loser. But I'm making a point is that it's not a bad thing not to know. What the bad part of it is, is when you attach yourself to a player that you don't know, and you get upset when your team invariably doesn't take them. That's just silly time. So here's what I wanted to do. I was on a quest last night to just find a player that would sync up with what Brad Holmes has talked about. Cornerstone. There's only a certain number of cornerstone guys that check the boxes and are the guys you have to covet. And I thought about the Lions and the culture they've attempted to build and who they are. Mm -hmm. What I have for everyone today, I am going to sell you on the first annual Mr. Lions pageant. Okay. I have a player that I think would be a home run at pick 29 that was built in a laboratory, very much in the same way some of your players have been built. From an attitudinal standpoint, from a work ethic standpoint, from a play style standpoint, from a physical standpoint, checks all the boxes. So, what I wanted to do was sell you on this. Okay. And I want to see if you can guess who it is as I get some hints towards the end. Does that sound remotely entertaining to anybody? Okay. Okay. Now, D David, do we have some stupid music for this? No. Okay. What happened? Roberto putting... Why did you just put the Joe Lewis fist up? What is this? You said ridiculous music. Okay, I'm not comfortable. All right, here we go. First of all, the player I am speaking about to win the first ever Mr. Lions draft pageant is all grit. All grit. As Kenny Cott put it, a sandpaper guy. You line up against this cat, you know. You walk away from that matchup, you know who you played. All grit. Number two, this player is versatile, can play multiple positions, invaluable in today's game. So grit, versatility, hmm. top to bottom, this is a football guy. We talk about Frank Rag now, football guy. This is a guy who, by all measure, had no business playing in the ball game. You know what he said? No. I'm here. I'm going to lock arms with my brothers, and we're going out winners. I'm playing. Football guy. Okay, that just took who I. Okay, let's go. Okay. <laughs> this dude is corn-fed. This is just one of these Midwestern, big, nasty, meat and potatoes players. I mean, just emanates from a cornfield and just cracks heads. A quintessential 
Big Ten type, nasty, bruising mm. football player. I was about to say Cooper DeGene, but um, that let, uh, it's okay. I love where your head's at here now. This guy is experienced. This is not an early entrant. This is a guy who played a bleep ton of football in college. He has been through the wars. You are getting a grown-ass man who would start from day one. Grit, versatile, football guy, corn-fed, experienced. Up next, low to no ego. There is no ego. It's all about ball. It's all about the team. It's all about personal sacrifice with this guy. You will never have to worry about this guy playing hurt. It's on tape. Very Ragnow-esque in that regard. David, I feel like he's given us a couple hints in here. Oh, there are. But Keep going. Let me give you another. Let's give you the physical. The player who I think should win the Mr. Lions draft pageant and be the player of this show, who we begin to advocate for, stands in at 6'4", 335 pounds of twisted dairy farming steel. The player who stands 6'4", 335, emanates from the Sunflower State. You don't know the Sunflower State. No, I don't know the Sunflower State. Let me just give you the name. The player I'm speaking of is Kansas State guard slash tackle slash football murderer. BB. Connor BB. Oh. Now, if you don't believe me, you can go watch this man. You don't need to waste your Saturdays like I do. You could just go to the YouTube, do whatever you like. Connor Beebe would walk in the door capable of playing both guard spots and tackle. You know what that lets you do? Bye-bye, Jonah Jackson. Bye. Farewell. Or you sign him. You line up Beebe. And you know, it's time for Decker. Hey, Connor Beebe at 29. Grit, versatility, football guy. Low ego, physical. I mean, this dude murders people. Just as you said hey, about Nick Bolton. There's only Bolton, one guy. Uh, Nick Bolton, <laughs> this dude kills people. Connor BB is a destroyer. Isn't it Cooper? Cooper, Cooper Connor. Yeah. Listen, David, this dude's a football player. And K-State, you know the drill. There's no ego on that team. K-State will line up in a Big 12. They go to war. This guy would be incredible on the Detroit Lions. And I haven't heard his name yet. He's anywhere from the late first to early second. He's one of my favorite players in the draft. And it just, you can see him in a Honolulu blue and silver jersey. Talk to me. I'm looking at this, Mike. I think that he would make it. He would fit the lines. I like where you were going with that. For a while, I thought, okay, he's talking Cooper DeGene coming in here. <laughs> no, because no. It, he fit all the stuff until you said, oh, he can, he's physical. I'm like, no, that's not him. But Cooper could be the defensive back, kickoff returner type of thing, special fun player. But I do like where your head is at. This is strength on strength, day he, one starter. Now, it's it's one of those, he's not going to sell jerseys. It's kind of like when you got Panay Sewell and it was like, Okay, I guess that's a good investment. You know who he, he reminds me of? He turned out to be a very good investment. Let me tell you who he reminds me of. David will know this because he was a stealer. You'll know it because you're a nerd, and I mean that affectionately. And I only mean not that he's a Hall of Famer, but that he plays mean. One of the meanest offensive linemen I have ever witnessed in my life was a guy who played for the Steelers. Pouncey? Nah, nah oh, okay. even meaner. And they drafted him out of, uh, I believe, LSU, Alan Fanica. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Alan Fanica, I just, you felt like you weren't going to come out alive. He would just choke slam people. BB is just nasty. And I can just, like, if I envision BB next to Sewell, 
And then maybe BB moonlights at center someday or another guard spot or a swing tackle. You're 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 going to keep the continuity of that offensive line being a strength of the team. Mm -hmm. And if I'm drafting an interior guy, think about the weapon you have when he can play at least four spots on that line. But realistically, let's say left tackles, not in the cards, both guard spots and right tackle. No, it's funny because I'm looking at a CBS mock draft. Where they got baby go? To the Lions. No. Second round pick. Oh, okay. I feel better about no, it. No, no. They, so they not... got him going at 61. Oh, so my th- God. This, that'd be a no, no, no. Steal. This, you're, you're, you may have something here. Just like the whole Kenny Cott thing, Mike, you've opened my mind to He's some in things. A, dude, he was built in a lab to be a Lion. Not only that, but now Brad Holmes could trade back to get him because I don't think that there's going to be this great demand for him in the first round. So if you're sitting there at pick 29 and let's say somebody wants to grab that last QB to get that extra year, you want Bo Nix because he's still sitting there. You want Penix because he's still sitting there. You trade back with the Lions. They pick him up in the second round plus get extra picks. The versatility that you have because your offensive line, when they were all together, you look like world beaters. Like what but, I what I don't like is like when you're picking at pick 29. You know what I'll do? Let me save the rest that, of my no, 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 but let me just take a bow. This was good. <laughs> it's, it's just this no no no. This would not yeah, where I thought li- you were gonna go with this. The listeners clearly agree. <laughs> <laughs> it's an offensive lineman. <laughs> David, what was that? Your thoughts on Alan Fanica? Your thoughts on ice cream. Your thoughts on kid number four. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need that. Um, it's offensive linemen. Offensive linemen don't move the needle, but. They win games. Guys, how do you feel about this? 248-539-9797. Because Brad Holmes is going to go offense with that pick. Brad Holmes loves to draft offensive players. Defense, I think Aiden was there, so you had to take Aiden. But he's shown more and more that offense is where he wants to go in that first round. The versatility, yeah, Jonah Jackson, you could let him go bye-bye. Or you re-sign him, and when it's time to re-up Taylor Decker, you can let him go bye-bye. You're restocking that offensive line. When they played together, that line was potent. They only had lost one game when they all played together. I like to pick. You know me. I like defense. I know. I probably would hope that you would either, like I said, chop Robinson or the um, the D lineman out of Texas if he happens to fall down to you. I would go that route. But I like this pick. I think that that's it. Screams Lions, and it also screams Brad Holmes. So 